Well, it's the eve of training camp here for the Nottingham Panthers, and I'm delighted to be joined by Jordan Kelso on Panthers TV in association with Jeremiah's Chimney Systems. Jordan, welcome. Thank you for joining us. How exciting, you know, this, to me, this feels like Christmas for, for uh -huh. players and staff and media alike. Everyone comes together, old friends and new. Is this one of the most exciting parts of the season? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's almost like day minus one, you know, like we all officially meet up tomorrow, but guys are coming in uh, into town now and dropping their equipment off and, you know, you come into our amazing locker room and get all your brand new stuff and it is kind of like Christmas. Yeah, you're right. Um, but no, it's a really exciting time and from the guys that I've met already, you know, we're all really excited to get going and uh, looking forward to tomorrow. It's been very interesting speaking to the coaches in the off-season and every player and it's clear from conversations that the coaches have had with the players that, that there's a real belief in an ethos, not just about how players conduct themselves off and on the ice, but also the style the team wants to play. Do you feel you're very aware of that as well? Yeah, definitely. You know, just the things kind of I've seen around around the rink and the locker room at the moment, they're definitely um, putting their, their own stamp on it, which is nice to see. Um, I'm sure we'll find more out tomorrow and in the days to come, but um, it's important, you know, the fans want to see a, a certain brand of hockey and I think the coaches have, have done a, some really good research and I think we're going to play that, which is nice. Um, but yeah, it's just exciting, you know, new set of coaches, new set of you know, players and friends and uh, we're really looking forward to it. I don't want to dwell on, on last season much at all, but do you feel that this is a, a new start because we all admit that last season didn't quite go the way. Mm -hmm. So do you see this season as, as going some way to trying to correct the, the, the wrongs from last season? Yeah, definitely. You know, we're, we've all got a new start. Um, you know, we're starting from, you know, a fresh page and, you know, we need everyone on that mindset. You know, the guys are returning. We can't really dwell on, on the past. It's kind of gone now. So um, we need to focus on this season and kind of put that one behind us. But also... I think there's positives to take from from last season, from you know individual performances, and I think you can look back and see how you know did I play well in this game, or what did I do to prepare, or what did I do during the game, and, and bring it to this season and just be the best version of ourselves that we can be um, in order to try and win. I think that's all we can do, and um, I know I'm definitely you know, starting fresh and, and looking forward to it. In the off-season, Jonathan Paraday, I talked to him about British players and he, he said this lovely phrase, the guardians of the club. And mm -hmm. David Clark's just behind you there <laughs> in shot and, and he is probably the most famous on the, the mm -hmm. if not the, to play for the Nottingham Panthers. And I go back to, to David Clark and Robert Lakovic and mm -hmm. Stevie Lee and Robert Farmer, Matthew Myers. That yeah. There was a core there, just as, as you were emerging. I'm sure there's mm -hmm. others that I've not mentioned, Mark Leavers earlier on before that. How much do you take from the fact that you're back for this season, Ollie and, and Josh Tetlow are, are, are reunited, of course. Yeah. You've got Logan Nielsen, who knows all about this club. Mm -hmm. How much do you feel that, that that phrase, that you're the guardians, to, to maybe take this club forward like those predecessors we mentioned earlier? Yeah, I mean, they set one hell of an example, you know, all the trophies that they won together. Um, but it's true, you know, we have to be the the next crop of that because I think that's part of why they were so successful, you know. They kept the room together, you know, every year they came back, the incoming guys knew, you know, settled in really quickly and, and those teams that they had always got off to a, a really good start and ultimately that's what you need to win the league championship like they ended up doing. Um, and then when times are tough, you know, those guys are standing up and, you know, bringing the boys back together and I think we have to do that because we keep returning but we need to start moving forward now and, and I'm so happy that those two guys are back too and obviously with the addition of Logan it's going to be you know nice to have them back around and I'm hoping that the four of us you know maybe there's some more along the way I'm not sure um, can build that next you know crop of British core that you could say um, and it's exciting you know a bit of leadership you know it never hurts anyone really and I know I'm looking forward to it and I know those guys are too after speaking to them about it. So yeah, um, it's exciting. And also with it, with a Nottingham connection, you know, yourself obviously ingrained in Nottingham as a fan. Mm -hmm. Lucas Sheldon, who, who's come back for a second year, I saw a great tweet by his dad last night, which we retweeted about the fact that was 
how many of many years ago he was collecting pucks and, and yeah. then he was at the, the shirt launch on, on Monday. It's lovely as well that, that Nottingham players are getting the chance as well to, to play for this famous club. Yeah, definitely. And it's not something, you know, we take lightly. It's, uh, you know, it's an honour to play for the club and, you know, just because you're from Nottingham doesn't mean you should play here, you know. I think it's earned, um, but also to say that you play for your hometown club literally can't be taken away. It's, you have to pinch yourself every day that I can come here and play hockey, which is what I love, um, and for the Panthers too. Um, there's no feeling like it really, and I'm just so happy that I get to do that every day. Interesting point you made there. Do you ever sometimes, even now, think back to that Jordan as a child watching yeah. all those players and think, wow, I am now that person that, that I watched? Yeah, definitely. Like, I've said it. On other interviews before, I just remember watching like Corey, you know, player player coaching with Matthew and Lacko and Clarky, and you know, you look up to these players, and then when you grow up, you meet them, and then they're your teammates. It's almost like a surreal feeling. And obviously, last year with Corey coming back as coach, it was almost like I'd gone round like a full circle. <laughs> you know, um, it's great. I mean, it's what's got me here to this point, and kind of like you said earlier, I need to push on now and hopefully become that you know, next person that everyone's talking about that was very successful here. We make another interesting point then about that. Did it take a lot of time to, to transition from that young Jordan Kelsor who's probably in awe of those people mm -hmm. because they're who you've watched to actually become equal with them and, and play your own part? Was there a transition in, in that move? I think a little bit. Um, but also, I mean, this speaks to the guys that were here. They welcome you so, you know, so well, you know. My first year, we had quite a deep British, I think it was like eight or nine British guys, um, and they just welcomed you in the locker room like you're one of them, and, and they never made me feel like I should be in all, you know, they're just such welcoming guys, and um, that kind of speaks to, you know, testament to them, you know, how great teammates they were, and, you know, I've definitely learned from that, you know. Um, we're all kind of equals in there, and we should all be treated the same, and... and they set that example 100%. Just looking at last season and the past few years for you, well, to start this question, congratulations on your, your graduation. Thank you. Absolutely fantastic that you were able to juggle work and school for, for that time. Mm -hmm. How was that process? I mean, let's just, first of all, the, the juggle between the two. I guess mm -hmm. I, no one could tell it on the ice, I must say, but the juggling must have been quite difficult at times. It was difficult at times. Um, there wasn't really a day off the whole year because, um, you know, if we play back-to-back -back games, Saturday, Sunday, um, my busiest day at university was a Monday, um, and that's just because I was juggling it. So um, I'd be in from, like, I think it was 9 till 11, have, like, a two-hour break, and then from, like, I think it was 3 until, like, 7 p.m. we were there, like, at university. So there were long days um, after practice, too. You know, I'd head up, like running up through town to <laughs> my lecture so I didn't miss it but I'm just so happy I was able to juggle it and I think you know thanks goes out to not only the Panthers for allowing me to do it but also the university you know they were so so welcoming and um, I was able to move my timetable around hockey and um, it was great I can't speak highly enough of, of Nottingham Trent University they really supported me throughout um, and I'm just so happy that I graduated and finished it whilst juggling the hockey. Hockey can be a short career. You're not paid the millions of bucks like the Premier League footballers. Mm -hmm. How important was it for you to do something to think about life after hockey? Yeah, it was. It kind of started during COVID, funnily enough. I kind of just like re-evaluated where I was and it was a bit like, Jesus, like we can't play. The season was pushed back and pushed back again. It felt like the pandemic was never going to end. So it kind of was a bit of a a little bit of a realisation that like well all of a sudden hockey's taken away now what do you do kind of thing um, and it gave me the motivation to really think you know what do you want to do after hockey and not that that's ended anytime soon but I think the pandemic was really the switch um, to think of right you need to kind of set yourself up and that's when I applied to start and that kind of you know Everything since then has rolled in like one year after another and I'm here finished. It's like, it's gone so fast, but that's kind of what started it. Um, and it did make me think, you know, what, what do you want to do in the future kind of thing. I know plenty of others have done it before you, so it shows it, it can be done. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's tough, but 
I guess you would fully endorse it because you're a shiny example that, that it yeah. can be done. That if anyone's young now, maybe I'll say, you know, a message of advice. If anyone's young now thinking education or hockey, your evidence, aren't you, that both can yeah. be achieved? They can. You don't have to choose one route. You can do both. Um, it just takes hard work and just perseverance. Like, it's going to be difficult, but also the reward is so so massive, you know. Now I can just play and not worry about, okay, am I got, am I, do I have anything after hockey if something happens, you know? Do I have an education? Well, I, I'm just thankful that I do. Um, and also when you're playing, it takes sometimes takes your mind off of hockey if it's not going so well. I mean, last year I could have dwelled on the season the whole way through, but... I didn't because I was too busy worrying about university and writing this paper and finishing this project and stuff. So I think it has its real benefits. And I've noticed that when I had something else away from the rink going on, whether it be my A-levels when I was younger or my university, I actually seem to play better. You know, I've had different focuses and um, I've definitely learned a lot by juggling both. And it definitely can be done at the same time. Just want to stay with the personal touch of things. You were GB international. You represented mm-hmm. GB as a junior, yet to reach the senior squad. How much does that GB desire still burn hard in you to, to make that next step up? Yeah, it really does. I mean, especially after watching them here in Nottingham. You know, the tournament was amazing. They played great. I kind of wish I was part of that team. You know, when you sit and watch, you just wish that you could be down there winning the medal with the guys. So. Definitely burn strong. Um, I'm doing everything I can to, you know, push towards that. Um, it's not out of the question. I don't think I just have to keep going and, and you know, if it's meant to happen, it will. Um, I believe in that, but also it's going to take some hard work because that's a tough nut to crack right now. You know, they're just right back up in the top group again. So, um, again, that just shows what a great team they are. And just so I want to bring it back round to, to the present, Pre-season, how much, season's not won or lost, is it, in pre-season, but how much can a tone be set, do you think, in your team's pre-season? Yeah, 100%. Um, like you said, the results don't necessarily matter. You know, we're, we're going to be in training for a week and then we play two massive games against Sheffield, which, you know, everyone loves to go and watch and everyone looks at the result. But I think for us, it's just about understanding the way the coaches want us to play and adapting to that as fast as possible, but also putting in 100% work rate, which is a given, we should do that, and play some entertaining hockey. And if we win, I think this weekend, well, great. And if we don't, well, we've got two more preseason games to get ready for the big first league game or Challenge Cup game. So season isn't made or lost in two weeks of preseason camp, but it definitely sets a tone. And I know... I'm ready for camp and I'm sure everyone else is and we're really looking forward to it. Well, I'll end on a question about the camp in a moment, but just before that, as well, is, is this pre-season where friendships are born and, and where a tightness of a squad can, can be shown? And, and that's half the battle, isn't it? If you get 20 guys on the same page straight away, you're already half winning the battle of a season. 100%. And, you know, with a lot of new guys coming in, I think that's of most importance, if I'm honest. We can all play hockey because if we couldn't, we wouldn't be here. But... Um, we, I need to go and make 20 new friends tomorrow, that's the truth. And the faster we can do that and enjoy the time together, um, the hockey just rolls along with it. I think if you enjoy being at the rink and enjoy being with your friends, chances are you're going to play better hockey. So um, I'm sure they've got some stuff lined up so that we don't have a choice. We're going to be uh, doing some fun stuff, I imagine. But um, no, that you're right, it's, it's about the group bond and I think that directly relates to the performance on the ice. So. Looking forward to it. Yeah, have you done your video? Uh-huh. Oh, you've done your video. Uh-huh. But that actually brings me on to like Jonathan and, and Kevin have obviously got some great ideas. Mm-hmm. And looking at the pre-season schedule, that, that's very intense. Yeah. I noticed there's an army day coming up. I actually tried to get the coaches to go to the cricket that night, but they said, oh, we're not finishing till nine. Oh, so I think, I think that's a nine till yeah. nine. So they oh, said, politely yeah. declined and said, so, but, you know, I kind of joke, but, you know, it shows that they're in. So yeah. they're in, in, involved in the process. But I guess part of the question is, it's clearly going to be intense pre-season. How much does that yeah. excite you or otherwise? It's going to be tough. There's no doubt about it. I think when we was at the, the signing event, the shirt launch the other day, you know, the fans were like, oh, you know, are you ready for camp? I was like, oh, I think so. But looking at the schedule, it seems pretty tough. So 
Um, but it's good. It's exactly what we need. And, you know, I spoke to Kevin the other day. Um, I mean, we're going to, some days we skate twice on the ice a day. So, you know, two, three hours a day. And he said, do you mind? I said, no, because I just want to feel as in season shape as, as fast as possible. And if that means we skate twice a day, then kind of so be it. You know, I just want to be feeling as good as I can come the weekend of games. And it's not going to be easy. There's going to be a lot of hard work, but um, I'm glad we got the army day in there <laughs> to kind of, so Tuesday we don't have to skate twice. But, no. uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's exciting. Um, it's a fun time of year. And um, I'm just hoping that we can relay that to our performance on the ice. Brilliant. It's been great chatting to you, Jordan. Thanks, and thanks for joining us as Thank ever you. on Panthers TV in association with Jeremiah's Chimney Systems. Thank you, mate.